Saudi Aramco has made it official and taken the record for the largest, biggest IPO in history. A few moments ago, it confirmed $25.6 billion had been raised with an IPO. Now, that in itself is not the biggest number, but extrapolate out the 1.5% sold to the total company, and it makes Aramco the most valuable publicly traded company in the world. $1.7 trillion. Still short of the $2 trillion the country's leaders were once hoping for. John Defterius is in Vienna. Even so, they, they may not have got that record uh, of $2 trillion, but they got a number with which they will be happy. How did they do it? Well, Richard, I was going to say, let's start off with the fact that the mystery is now over. This has been carrying on for three years, as you know. In fact, the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman uh, told us uh, in late 2017 he wanted to get it done in the first half of 2018. Then they had the arrest of the Ritz-Carlton 400 and the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, they want to try to put this behind them. They did it in a very controlled setting. And what I mean by that, they're picking the national market of Riyadh, uh, not uh, the aspirations of New York or London perhaps Tokyo or Shanghai, a very controlled market, if you will. They even lent money to the national investors to buy the shares as a trophy, a national trophy that they have. And they even leaned on their neighbors, Richard, in the UAE and in Kuwait to raise over $2 billion. So this is the safe route out for Mohammed bin Salman. 1.5% stake, not the 5% that you were talking about before. Uh, and it's something that when it starts to trade on December 11th, will only go higher. I can't imagine this is a government that's going to let that stock ever drift lower. Uh, but it is a sizable player with a valuation of $1.7 okay. trillion. It has a bigger market cap than all top five John. IOCs in the world from ExxonMobil, Chevron, BP, and Total, and others. John, what does it mean, though, now it is trading publicly? Uh, for most companies, it would mean greater shareholder scrutiny, reporting to the market every quarter, uh, shareholder activism. Now, they've only sold 1.5%. For Aramco, what does it mean? Well, I, I think, actually, Richard, this is a company that's much more efficient than most would ever know. They have a very low cost of production at 2 to $4 a barrel, whether it's onshore or offshore. Uh, they have been extremely transparent, revaluing the reserves now of nearly 270 billion barrels, and they welcome this idea of opening the books. But to your point, it's not the scrutiny of Wall Street, not the scrutiny of London or what you would find in Asia, uh, but in fairness, the Riyadh market is a member of the MSCI, and it's a trigger point for the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman, uh, to try to open up the economy to foreign direct investment. And on that front, since of the issues that I talked about before, their FDI has nearly dried up. It's only a quarter of what it was back in 2012, and the growth has flatlined because of the uncertainty. They're hoping at the end of 2019, the Open 2020, they're chairing the G20 for all of that year, and Aramco can serve as a catalyst. Now, the other issue that came up here at OPEC, and the ministers are still inside kind of debating the cuts uh, for 2020, is whether the Aramco narrative started to filter into their decision making. I pose that question to the Minister of Petroleum for Iraq. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. I don't see really the uh, interlink between the two. After all, it's just a 3% of, 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 of the Less overall. Less than 3%. Less than 3%. So why should really it affect or it, it will impact on OPEC or the role of Saudi Arabia within OPEC? If this okay, leads to further commercialization and privatization, uh, but more significant, then one could talk about this. But now I don't think so. John, what is the... What is believed to be the real price, the non-speculative real price of oil, assuming that, the, that OPEC and OPEC Plus were not gerrymandering the market? Well, uh, Richard, this is a very good point because it's the real wild card is the U.S. producers. They added 1.8 million barrels a day in 2019. And there's a divided camp, according to the sources I've been speaking with, uh, when that uh, 
big boom in the United States, particularly in the Permian, starts to run out of fuel right now. Uh, many are believing that's going to happen midway through 2020. But again, the Iraqi oil minister said, look, we've count the shale producers out before, and that was a mistake. So the discussion behind closed doors right now, Richard, is to cut another 500,000 barrels a day. What does it tell us? There's a new sheriff in town. That is the half-brother of the Crown Prince. His name is Abdul Aziz bin Salman. This is his first OPEC meeting. And he's saying not just 1.2 million barrels a day. I'm willing to go 1.7 to shore up the market and perhaps even help my share price for Aramco going forward. That's controversial. If they did not cut right now, Richard, and they decided to pull out of that 1.2 million barrels a day that's originally on the table, this would be a very different energy market. In fact, they have concerns about the future. You're coming into a meeting with $63 a barrel. You'd think they would just roll over the agreement. They're worried about slow growth in 2020 and the U.S.-China trade dispute.